There may be um, two or three people still coming, but I think we should start because uh, Dr. Anderson cannot be here longer than uh, until 11 o'clock, and I think we want to use uh, all the time that we can with him. Uh, during our uh, movements around the Cedar Riverside area, we've heard references made to the West Bank process. We haven't said uh, much about it, just casual references made to it, and yet it's an important part of the dynamics of the Cedar Riverside area. And uh, President Anderson has been at, in, at the center of the development of the West Bank process since its uh, inception and is, is, uh, is the uh, president of the West Bank process. I don't know what, t what labels you're using on that. She but anyway, the meeting. <laughs> he, he is the chairman of the West Bank process. So um, we're just very glad that he could give us part of his time and we'll let him tell us about this. And uh, then we can get into the active questions. And Mr. Fossey will come about uh, 11 o'clock to uh, tell us about some of the developments in college planning. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I uh, appreciate getting in on this class, at least at the tail end. Uh, I think uh, considering all the things that you've covered uh, since you began this interim, uh, I probably should have enrolled in the course because um, somehow or another I have to get this all put together and no doubt uh, your overview of all of this has provided you with some kind of a, of a uh, consolidated view of uh, what's actually taking place. Uh, in this very dynamic area, and I don't need to tell you about all the elements that are going into this um, particular community, which is without doubt one of the most significant in the country, if not in the entire world. All right, I'm here to talk about the West Bank process. What is it? It's a cooperative effort on the part of seven private entities on the West Bank all of whom are adjacent to, contiguous to one another. This is one of the interesting things about uh, the Cedar Riverside area, that right in the middle of this new town in town, this community development, are institutions which uh, have a certain affinity and a certain uh, common character and it is only natural that these should come together, and they are Augsburg College, St. Mary's Junior College, Fairview Hospital, St. Mary's Hospital, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Trinity Congregation, and Riverside Center. Now, these seven, six are operating entities. Riverside Center is uh, still a kind of a concept, and, but has an organization and we include that as one of the seven in order to round out the divine number of completion. How did it all begin? Well, it's less than a year ago that we were in the process of planning a conference, a conference uh, aimed at answering the question, what is the role and what will be the mission? of the private institutions on the West Bank. We had a feeling that there was the necessity for getting this entity together, vis-a-vis -vis the university, with which we were also cooperating through the University Community Development Corporation, and the private developers in the area. It seemed as though we were kind of a third world. You had this large private development, you have the tremendous development of the University of Minnesota, and then you had these private institutions. And so in March of 1972, a conference was held on this campus, and it involved these seven institutions with all of the other related uh, groups and uh, entities around us cooperating but we were struggling with the question, what is our particular role? Now, uh, that was a, a very uh, unique conference, nothing like it, I guess, had ever been held uh, before. Uh, and here, every institution indicated 
where it was at, where it thought it was going. Uh, the university and the Cedar Riverside uh, told us where they thought they were going and how they thought they ought to relate and so on. And then we uh, asked the question after the conference was over, now what do we do? And we felt that the conference itself had been a kind of a process of enlarging our own understanding and of um, strengthening our connections with our neighbors. And so we thought, well, rather than setting up some kind of a fancy organization of these uh, private uh, entities, we would simply continue the process. Continue the process of discussion, continue the process of coordination, continue the process of providing one another with information, and cooperating on certain specific points. So, the chief executives of the uh, seven groups got together and said, we are the West Bank process and we will do what we can to keep the process going. So how does it work? How does it function? Well, we hold a meeting at least once a month of the chief executives of these seven entities. We've been fortunate to have some staff help in the person of Warner Shippey, who is the executive director of the University Community Development Corporation, where he has seen his role as that of service to the various groups within the university community that are working together. For instance, he has provided some staff help for the uh, Southeast uh, M uh, Minneapolis um, uh, committee, SEMPAC. He has worked uh, with the San Anthony Park Development uh, Committee. Uh, he's working with the West Bank process uh, and in that way providing help out of his office uh, for the staff details that need to be taken care of. We uh, keep careful minutes of our meetings and we have planned some special conferences to deal with specific uh, topics, some of which I will uh, mention in a few minutes. And we have a place where we regularly meet. We meet for breakfast, usually on a Friday morning, and we have what we call a war room. <laughs> it's kind of our spot for, uh, for planning our strategies, and it happens to be the conference room of the Trinity Congregation Center down here on Riverside. And we have a whole wall there with all our maps. We're not as sophisticated as Cedar Riverside with all their fancy uh, wall hangings, but uh, at least we have one place where we can refer to the way in which the area is developing. So uh, this then is the, is the background, uh, the constituency, and the method of uh, operation that we have as a, as a group. We have no budget. Uh, simply because uh, we contribute our services as executives to the West Bank process, and we use the contributed services of UCDC through Warner Shippey to provide us with staff work. And uh, up to now, Trinity Congregation has been providing the orange juice and the rolls for breakfast. One of these days, we're going to have to get that kitty uh, going so that uh, they don't have to carry the whole weight. But that's the extent of our, of our uh, expenditures. However, we do uh, cooperate uh, through um, institutional funds from time to time on specific projects that have to be uh, taken care of. Now, I'll just stop for a minute and ask if there are any questions with respect to how we got started and what we're trying to do. I thought that after that I would go down through a kind of a chronological review uh, without giving you dates or anything, but just having gone through our minutes. Uh, of what we have been concerning ourselves with, what the items have been on our agenda, and where we are with respect to some of these uh, matters. Yes. Okay, uh, Joel. We've talked about the Riverside Center, is that the concept now? Do you have, is that kind of a, is that a real entity in the process right now? There's no person representing it. Yeah, there is a person representing it, because there's still a, there is an organization. Okay. And uh, George Michelson serves, uh, Acting as acting president, and he, he attends our meetings, so that it's uh, John King from Fairview Hospital, Sister Mary Madonna from uh, St. Mary's Hospital, Sister Angelica from St. Mary's Junior College, 
Pastor Torgerson from Trinity, Father John from Our Lady, and myself. And George Michelson, that makes the seven. Yes? Um, could you tell me a little bit more about UCDC? Okay, uh, UCDC, University Community Development Corporation, began about 1965-66. Primarily under the aegis of the president of the university, Meredith Wilson, uh, Dr. Wilson felt that it was necessary to uh, take a coordinated view of the entire university community. And by the university community, you mean everything from the state fairgrounds and uh, Lauderdale in St. Paul to the uh, Cedar Riverside area in Minneapolis. It includes Prospect Park in the entire southeast Minneapolis area. It's a fantastic uh, amount of real estate, both in terms of uh, variety, potential, and value. Uh, this uh, University Community Development Corporation was uh, begun with six institutions. The University of Minnesota, Augsburg College, St. Mary's Junior College, Fairview Hospital, St. Mary's Hospital, and Luther Theological Seminary. St. Paul. The uh, purpose was to assure the uh, orderly and beneficial uh, development of the entire university community. It involved uh, a number of very leading uh, businessmen and institutional representatives. It has a number of, uh, um, what do they call them, not advisory members, but uh, associate members associate members. Various groups like, uh, uh, well, Cedar Riverside, the bank, uh, the um, other other groups in the area. Pillsbury Weight, I believe. Pillsbury Weight is in it, that's right, uh, as an associate members. Well, this group has been facilitated, or this organization has facilitated a number of studies. It has uh, coordinated uh, a great deal of the work that's gone on among the institutions. It's been a visible symbol of the fact that the uh, university uh, and its neighbors are concerned about the community. The list of things, and I have not prepared to report on that, the list of things that, that they have been interested in, housing, traffic studies, parking problems, site planning, um, population distribution, land usage, uh, all of these have been uh, concern. For instance, one of the one of the big matters that's unresolved yet, but which all of the university community is concerned about, is the proper utilization of that vast amount of railroad land over there in the southeast that isn't being used, and nobody really has come to up with any um, well real solution to that, primarily because the railroads just sit on that, but they aren't using it. And if you take a look at the University Community Development map, it's fantastic the amount of land there is over right in the middle of the city, sitting there. Well, that's the kind of problem that UCDC has been addressing itself to. Now, it may very well be that the UCDC's uh, value has, has uh, pretty well spent itself. In other words, we have established so many linkages and we have learned to cooperate so much with each other that it may not be necessary for us to try and fund a fifty, sixty thousand dollar budget a year for UCDC. And that seems to be the way in which we are going. It does not mean that there is any diminishing of concern or any uh, reduction in the possibility of cooperation, but this particular entity may not need to be uh, further uh, continued because uh, there are other ways of taking care of it. In terms of perspective, it's kind of interesting to note that we borrowed much of the idea from uh, the West Philadelphia Corporation right. Right. and the uh, University of Pennsylvania and other institutions around the Drexel University. I'll never forget the meeting that we had at the Northwestern National Life Insurance Company with Mr. Molinaro from Philadelphia when he, when he painted the whole picture of what had happened out there when a uh, private institution, because the University of Pennsylvania is a private institution, uh, got together with their own um, neighbors and really developed that. It represents a kind of a reversal of the posture of the university communities vis-a-vis -vis urban life. Right. 
So the University Community Corporation here seems to be played that role in our midst uh, of the West Philadelphia Corporation. I think there was another very important benefit, and that is that uh, it uh, focused the attention of uh, the leadership in the community on the on the whole university area. Uh, and this needed to be done because sometimes uh, groups in an area such as this kind of go off by themselves, and when you've got a, a huge entity like the University of Minnesota, uh, it becomes difficult for, that is a state institution, becomes inst difficult for the university to really grapple with the local issues because the legislators and everyone else consider it to be a state institution. And they mustn't get fussing around with, with local issues. After all, the university belongs to the state. And uh, they have this battle to fight. And so in order for them to facilitate their involvement, they wanted this kind of a... Of a Incidentally, Molinero now you know, is the president of the Urban Life Center, the American City, City Corporation in Columbia. Okay, uh, any, yes. Linkages. What are some of the end results or goals you're trying to set up for the West Bank process as you're working towards? Well, uh, let me just, uh, I, think, I think these may become apparent when I go through my uh, list here, which is a uh, culling out of uh, items from the uh, from the uh, minutes, give you an overview of what we are working with. I think our 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 main purpose is to is to uh, communicate with each other, to coordinate with each other, and to cooperate on those things that we need to do together to get things happening in the area. Now, this doesn't mean that we are in any way withdrawing from any other kind of co uh, cooperation. It simply means that we have common things that we can do together. Just let me go over some of these now, and you'll get an idea. And these, these keep popping up throughout all the minutes. But I, I listed them here as I ran across them in my review of the minutes. Um, one of the very first things that came up, uh, and it was an obvious uh, point, was the matter of uh, continual cooperation with the, with the developer. And I remember one of, at the very first meeting, the point came up uh, will the private institutions cooperate with the developer in trying to establish certain uh, specific entry points into the Cedar Riverside area and uh, help in providing identity for these entry points so that people coming into the area will be able to say, now we are coming into we know what, rather than now what is this? Uh, and, and so we're trying to to work uh, out something along this line. Maybe some of these things you've heard about from another dimension, from another side, but I'm giving it to you from, from our perspective. So that kind of cooperation, of course, with Cedar Riverside Associates and so on, uh, runs right straight through all of the minutes. It keeps popping up all the time. Last, and I'll indicate what the nature of our last meeting was, because I think it, it links up with something that you took uh, part in just recently. The second. Um, area that has been uh, a great concern to us is coordinated planning. For many years now, our own development as a college has been seen in terms of what happens on this side of Riverside. And you know that for uh, many years, <coughs> Augsburg had a dormitory on the other side of Riverside. It was just a matter of time before that dormitory would be sold and that area across Riverside developed for the medical area, and Augsburg would then be all together on this side of the river. Well, we have been working at this for many years, and have many uh, abortive attempts to try to uh, get that um, dormitory disposed of and uh, the uh, medical people working on their project. Finally, finally, uh, this last spring, uh, we were able to make the transaction because the hospitals had gotten together on a plan for developing a medical office building of 60,000 square feet plus 400 parking spaces in the area between 20, uh, well, in that block where, um, where uh, Mortensen Hall stood, uh, plus the block uh, this way towards Smiley's Point. And uh, so this then opened up a whole new uh, 
chapter in terms of planning. And um, we have to now articulate the planning of this side with the other side. At the same time, we were coordinating then the matter of housing. With the loss of the dormitory, we had to have some replacement plan. And uh, the, at the same time, Fairview wanted to go out of the housing business for their nurses. And St. Mary's Junior College has been trying desperately to find housing for their students. So with the demolition of that building, we had to begin a coordinated plan for meeting housing needs for students in the Cedar uh, Riverside area, primarily of these uh, three institutions. And so out of that evolved the whole process that uh, is now taking shape in the uh, uh, high-rise uh, apartment residence. And they're pouring the ninth floor, the eighth floor this morning. And they will pour the ninth floor before the end of the week. And the foreman told me that by the end of this week, uh, he will be caught up, but he sees the final pouring of the top floor one month ahead of schedule, which is really fantastic. Of course, Bert can tell you about that because they got a nice big carrot out at the other end of the line. They get that building all completed, and we can move in on the 1st of, of September. The developer gets a $35,000 bonus, and they'd all like to go fishing. But he can tell you about that process because... That process that went into the, to the realization of that project is probably one of the most phenomenal stories in college housing that's ever been written. Uh, the whole thing was done in five months, and uh, I don't think anybody can match that. All right, coordinated planning. With this, of course, uh, goes a great deal of um, collection of maps and studies, institutional programs and plans, for instance, one of the first thing we did, uh, things we did was to take an inventory uh, of these institutions regarding their active programs, what programs they saw developing in the next two years, and what programs were under more long-range consideration. So we have kind of gathered together the things we are doing and plan to do uh, in the near future and uh, over the long pull. One of the uh, important um, matters is the subject of parking and circulation. And uh, we have been in constant uh, touch with uh, the planners, the developers rather, with the uh, city planners and with uh, our own planners to uh, consider uh, how we can best handle the movement of, of traffic and, uh, and a parking in the, in the community, particularly on the turf uh, that we occupy as the hospitals and the two colleges and the two congregations, all of which are contiguous. Uh, related to that, of course, is the more specific site planning. And uh, let me tell you what had to take place when the dormitory was sold and the medical development uh, was to uh, begin, and uh, they tell me that very soon now they will announce the developer over there and be getting started on that project. Fairview and St. Mary's wanted to get a study of the medical section over there in terms of where they ought to place their buildings, their parking, and their medical office building. So they employed Brower Associates, and they went to work on this, and uh, given the entrance into the area over on 25th, uh, given the uh, new configuration of 19th and uh, the parking facilities over there, they had to reroute the traffic through their area. And they, they landed on the idea that between 22nd and 23rd, there would be a major entrance into the medical area. Well, that said then, if there's going to be a major entrance to the north, there ought to be a major entrance to the south so that you had a point on Riverside at which you could enter the medical section or you could enter this educational area. Well, then when they started their studies with Brower, we started to revive our campus planning with our consultants in St. Louis 
And the result is that we have come up now with a campus plan that uh, does two things. First of all, it articulates with the planning on the other side of Riverside. But it also revises our own planning to more realistic figures for the future. Have you seen this yet? No. Uh, our own plans for the future, because about three years ago we had a, uh, a preliminary study made of the utilization of the land that Augsburg has from 20th to 25th uh, from Riverside to the freeway, which is a total of about 27 acres, streets and, and everything included, of which Augsburg will have to um, develop about 21 acres, and we presently control about 18. Well, uh, we had originally planned that the area would um, support 4,000 students. Those were in the halcyon days of the 60s, when everybody was making those wonderful projections about how big all these educational institutions were going to become. Boy, everybody had fantastic ideas. It's going to be unlimited growth. Just going to take off into the wild blue yonder. And then came 1970, and mm, everything went down. Population, everything else. And uh, now everybody's had to revise their figures. Well, we feel that if there's going to be uh, any realistic planning for the long-range future for Augsburg College, those figures had better rev be revised downward to 2,500. 2,500. And... Uh, and the reason that we take that uh, a view of that much of a, of a development is that uh, I think we have to make the plans big enough to accommodate what might happen in the next hundred years. Uh, we've just been a hundred years on this corner now, and we've got to be uh, willing to open up the possibilities for expansion in another hundred years, but it can always be pulled back because a sausage can always be cut off but you can't add to it. So we have to say, look, this is the one chance we've got to make these kind of plans. Well, let me, uh, I have, I, I tried to find the plans for the, for the medical development, but they are down in St. Louis, uh, which, uh, and they were used by our uh, planners to help develop uh, this plan. And then um, they didn't get them back up here. And, uh, if I'd had a little bit more notice about this, I probably could have gotten them up here, but I don't have them. Anyway, they have their own uh, development over there, and I think it's a very realistic and workable uh, plan for, uh, for the uh, future of, of the hospital. Oh, well, I guess a little bit more of this won't go a little bit. Fosse should be really the one that uh, should discuss this, but if he, he can uh, elaborate on it as we, as we uh, get into it later this morning. Here is uh, Riverside, and here is that entry that I spoke of into the medical area. Now to provide an entry into this area, uh, we should do it together. And that's what this plan does. Now uh, there are several elements to this. In the first place, we have to plan for parking. But par parking in this plan is peripheral. You notice that it's, it's out on the edge of things. Then the circulation is a ring road to get away from the vehicular traffic in the campus. So you come in this way, and the projection is for a one-way street all the way around this way. And back up here in front of Melby Hall, and then either out here or out here. In this way, you get a sense of campus identity and unity by clearing out all the streets through here and only creating your pedestrian ways. Now, this particular approach here is intended to what line up with the. Is that? What? what street is that? This is seven. This is 7th Street, and this is 23rd, and this is 21st, and this is the way that uh, 20th is seen as going into a road that will go out on, over in front of the Performing Arts Center at the University of Minnesota, and we'll swing down this way. Um, so you have the, the parking 
and the uh, ring road with the elimination of the uh, vehicular traffic inside. Yes? Um, I want to know what kind of parking you're going to have. What, is it just going to be like, um, you know, like... Surf surface parking? Yeah. Surf the, this plan calls for surface parking. However, the, the, the possibility exists at this point and at this point for decades. So that uh, if, if you need it, you can move uh, to that second level of, of parking. But for the time being, it is uh, surface parking. Now, the uh, I said this, this whole acreage here could have been developed at a high density, in a high density fashion, to have handled up to 4,000 students. However, with the with the shrinking of the of the projection, uh, it became necessary to face the question: Should the college get rid of several acres of this land, or should it try to find other ways in which to develop it? And right now we're operating on what I call the affinity group theory, that there are groups who would like to develop and locate on our campus that could move into this area and to this area and uh, be compatible with what we're doing and uh, save this area for the total development of a private institution rather than, say, selling it off to somebody else and just uh, contracting. In other words, to keep basic control of this. Now, as far as what you see in the buildings are concerned, you can recognize the buildings in brown that already exist, including the new tower over here. Any uh, future housing is seen as a continuation out in here. In other words, uh, housing not scattered all over, but more or less uh, kept over in here. The um, next, well, these are the academic buildings, and this building, Memorial Hall, is seen as ultimately becoming uh, the administration building of the college. You'll notice how that's gradually taking place now. You've got faculty offices in there, you've got the development offices in there, You've got uh, the uh, complex that uh, Dr. Torsenson is in. You've got student development over there. All of this has taken place in the last six years as that building has gradually been uh, assumed for uh, purposes of uh, academic administration. And this, of course, means that we pull out of uh, Science Hall completely uh, down the pipe and have that entirely for the sciences and mathematics. The, the, the building that is presently being programmed is the Music Drama Humanities Complex over here. And uh, we've already set in motion a process whereby we can begin to think in terms of getting uh, facilities for the music and the drama and the uh, speech communications and probably languages in, in this area. Now this uh, is a dream that uh, I hope is getting more closer and closer to a realization. Uh, but the, the uh, tentative plan for that is at this point, and uh, that's why we have to begin to look at the uh, removal of present buildings in this area in order to provide for that building. Uh, we have uh, just about ready to go now some plans for the uh, extension of the art building and we hope that by next fall that will be completed and we are in the process of discussing with a private developer an ice center here on a land lease basis that will ultimately the facility ultimately reverting to the college which will give you two complete ice rinks next to Melby Hall and I'm not making any promises but I'd like to see that completed by next fall, but there is still a number of hurdles. What about the possibility of swimming pool? All right, that's right here. That's the, that, that, those plans exist. And uh, if uh, somebody can find us the half million dollars necessary to do that, uh, we'll, we'll build that because it's, it's all ready to go. I mean, you know, it's just 
okay, we got the plans, let's do it. And the, the land and everything else are there. But this, this envisions the, the final completion of this area and the utilization of the rest of this for your field area spaces with a, a parking facility for 166 cars which can serve uh, these uh, activities. Carry on. And, uh, I've got to go run to a class at the university. Well, there's classes all over. Yeah. It's not a classless society.